on the air. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. <laughs> uh, how you guys doing? Welcome to Traveling with Bruce. I'm Bruce, your host and resident troublemaker. How are you guys doing? Hope you had a great weekend. I had a great weekend. I went to Costco. It was fantastic. I had a great time. I went to Costco. Got myself that chicken bake I've been craving all week long, and my wife got the hot dog, and we had we had that very, very Sunday. Oh, darn, darn, that was good. Jeez, that was good stuff. Loved it. Am I ever glad I went on Saturday? <laughs> we did the show uh, on Saturday afternoon here, and uh, we were in the car oh, about 45 minutes later after I got the video posted and took care of a few little things, and uh, drove down. Beautiful day. Gorgeous day. Uh, uh, sunny and, and, and calm and uh, 52, 53 degrees, great, all the way down to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, bought some cheap gasoline for my car. Uh, I know I'm saving about 50 cents a liter, uh, which is uh, like that's a dollar fifty plus, about a dollar eighty a gallon Canadian. Uh, I'm saving uh, buying gas down there unbelievable um yeah so uh filled the car up with gas and uh, did our shopping drove back in beautiful weather and then uh, woke up yesterday snowing <laughs> just it was a wet snow but snow nonetheless wouldn't want to drive in it and uh this morning i woke up blizzard i mean blizzard uh we had snow going past our living room, uh, literally doing this. It was just going right across the window like this. I could hear the house being buffeted by the winds uh, coming from the north. Unbelievable. It's rare for us to get whacked like that because we're, we're in a valley. We're not in a mountain pass. We're not in the open prairie. Uh, so we're sheltered by a lot of mountains around here that, you know, the, the winds have to be just right to have that kind of an effect. <clears throat> Oh yeah, and the power the power lines in front of my house are, are you know they're just doing this you know they're going right across. There's about ten of them and they're they're doing this, unbelievable. And um, I'm watching I have my television. I've got my computer on. I got my coffee, <clears throat> and uh, <coughs> got CNN on, whatever television station I had on. And the television turns off, dark, and I'm looking outside, and the street light just over here, it's off. <laughs> no power. <laughs> but then a minute later, uh, the street light comes on, and I see the television light flickering back on, and everything kind of boots back up again, and then the wind continues to howl, the snow continues to blow. What a morning! Well, this lasted for about an hour and a half, I and mean, we had about three power outages in about an hour, but none more than a minute. Just weird stuff. And then uh, things settled down, and by about uh, about. By 9.30, 10.30 this morning, uh, the snow stopped, and then the wind died down uh, about 11, 12 o'clock. Right now, uh, here we are at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, it's, um, it's only about 32, 33 degrees, so it's not a warm day at all. Brilliant sunshine. <laughs> blue sky up here with wispy white clouds that are being blown off. Uh, my driveway, which was covered in four inches of snow, is wet. It's just wet as if it was raining. The lawn still is white. Um, and the streets, uh, our little street here, which is just a little cul-de-sac, it's actually drying out in many spots. It's not just wet anymore. It's drying out. It's like it never happened. Unbelievable. I think by tomorrow day after, this will all be gone. It'll be burned away. Uh, but what an event. What a, what a quirky, weird thing just a little little gift from mother nature uh out of nowhere and uh you know it's one of those early april squalls or storms or whatever you're gonna call them i i don't know what to don't know what to call them but it was quite weird quite weird uh, anyway what can i say uh mm -hmm. folks are signing in that's great uh, great to have you guys back um a couple of things i guess on the channel uh again those of you who are who are new who've never watched me before uh, I'm Bruce out of Creston, British Columbia here in Canada. I'm three miles north of the Idaho border. Today I can see Idaho very clearly. America's right there looking great. And um, I talk about cruise ship vacations and, and taking holidays. And I compare notes with my viewers and uh, and uh, people who just you know watch, a, watch my videos. They'll write me a question about cruise ships. And I love answering them. And I get people tuning in on my live streams Monday to Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern time. 
Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, I usually show, throw in a second show at 8 o'clock Eastern time, and uh, you're welcome to join in. If you're new to cruising, you've never been on a cruise before, well, sign in like these folks are. Say hi. Tell me, where are you watching me from? What town are you in or what country are you in? Uh, I've got country, uh, people from all over the world who watch the show from time to time. Uh, tell me what your high temperature is today. I, I'm sure you're warmer than I am. And uh, if you're new to cruising, uh, hey, uh, if you're, you've never been on a cruise, you've come to the right place. This is the channel for you. Uh, if you don't know anything about going on a cruise, you want to know, this is it right here. You found the channel. Uh, we talk about cruising all the time. I'm live six days a week talking about cruising. I mean, ask me whatever you want to know. Uh, and if you haven't been on a cruise for a long time, like 5, 10, 15 years, you haven't been on a cruise, you too have found the right channel because uh, we'll update you on what's been going on because there's a lot going on. There's uh, changes like you can't believe. And I got some news today on, uh, on, uh, on a cruise, uh, on a cruise ship here. I found some news today and uh, got a couple of other stories to tell you. Uh, the channel, uh, I only started in August 2017. Uh, I'm not even eight months old, uh, this channel. Uh, we were at 1,505 subscribers Saturday afternoon when I left uh, my last regular scheduled live stream. Um, and right now I'm at 1,532. So 27 more subscribers in 48 hours have joined in to the party. Fantastic. I love it. This is awesome stuff. Uh, uh, I, I couldn't believe, uh, I, I remember when I hit 100, uh, it took me like three and a half, four months to get 100 subscribers. That was a big, big deal. And then when we hit 1,000 in uh, February, February 19th, can't forget that day, that uh, was an even bigger deal. And here we are now, 1532, and we're just going, we're go going to 1550, going to 1600, uh, heading to 2000 and beyond. Fantastic. We're going up there. I love it. Uh, 2,000 views a day, kind of. Now, 202,000 video views, I think. Almost 203,000 video views for my channel. Fantastic. 190 countries and territories around the world watch my shows or videos from time to time. And I thank you all very much for joining in. And uh, welcome you all back to my, uh, to my channel. Uh, let's, see who's, uh, let's see who's here. Uh, let's say hi to everybody. Uh, Wes Morrison signed in at 12.55. Since howdy, Bruce. Uh, 84 degrees here in New Braunfels, Texas. Man, that guy gets the temperatures, doesn't he? What a great April Fool's show. It made my day. April Fool's show. What are you talking about? Was was there an April Fool's show? Uh, when did that happen? Uh, Heather Young. Hi, Bruce and everyone. 58 today in Kentucky. Beautiful day. 58. I'll take that. Randy Lucas. Greetings, Bruce and all from the Regal Princess. He's at sea right now. He's killing me. He's at sea. We had a wonderful day at Princess K's, and we are getting underway, headed for St. Thomas day after tomorrow. Isn't that great? Uh, he's on the cruise ship talking to us. I love it. Debbie Emanuel. Hi, everyone. Uh, sunny and all. Uh, su sunny and hi, everyone. 74 degrees today, <clears throat> Northern California. I think she's in Chico. Um, seems like we'll probably get to 80. Isn't that something? Wow. That's, that's, uh, send it up. Send me some of that stuff. Uh, uh, sea lid uh, keeper, sea keeper. Uh, hi, Bruce and everyone. 82 degrees, Florida in the shade here in Tequista, Florida in the shade. Sunny and very enjoyable, I guess. I received my Star Trek insignia today, and it looks very good on my desk computer. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. He's talking about this thing right here, folks. He's talking about this thing right here. He's talking about this insignia right there. Does you see that? That's about the size of a, it's about the size of a U.S. quarter. And uh, you send me a $10 donation on my uh, Super Chat. And I'll send you one of those. No charge. I'd love to do that. Uh, that would be great. That's awesome. Fantastic. He's got his. That's great. Uh, Wendy Thompson's here. Hi, Bruce. Hi, everyone. Randy Lucas, have a rum and coke for me. <laughs> Randy, actually, Wendy, it's a double. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, yeah, Randy, I hope your weather is perfect. Uh, sea Keeper here. The, the mangoes are forming in the tree across the street. Oh, my goodness. That is something. Jim Thomas is here. Hi, all. Uh, 75 and sunny here in Anderson, uh, California looks like loved your show yesterday laughing out loud. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't do live streams on Sundays. Uh, I take Sundays off. I, I only do Monday to Saturday. I don't, what show are you talking about? Uh, Iskew Park. Hi, Bruce. Uh, it's Iskew Thunder Bay, Ontario, minus four Celsius and cloudy. And that crap weather was sent by me for that April Fool's joke you pulled everyone on everyone. Enjoy the show. What are you? What, what April Fool's show are you talking about? Uh, you got to be talking about my twin print brother. It, it can't be me, could it? Uh, Debbie Manuel is you love that laughing out land Randy Lucas sending me two bucks Randy you're you're awesome <laughs> thank you uh, first super chat from C I bet you it is it's the first super chat from the 
<laughs> from a cruise to help get me on a cruise. You got to love this guy. Thank you so much, Randy. <laughs> take all donations, any and all donations. I take them. Thank you. Debbie Manuel. Yay, Randy, even on vacay. Awesome. Jim Thomas. Oh, so jealous. Lucky Lucas. Hopefully you're having a great time. Hey, Deb, jealous of your trip coming up. And Jim Thomas, Deb, you are under 90 days. That's right. Yep, Debbie is getting ready. Awesome sauce. Fantastic. Oh, my goodness. I was um, looking up today um, uh, some stuff on the Internet, and uh, I came across a couple of things. Uh, talk about April Fools. I saw a, a story uh, about P&O Cruises from Australia. Uh, they announced a, uh, a a brand new experience for for cruisers down in the seas off of Australia, which I think this is a fantastic opportunity for people to take advantage of. You have to be on the right cruise ship to take advantage of this deal. But it looks like it doesn't matter. There's the, there's two different ships that are involved in this in this um, uh, this new uh, feature, and whether you're on one or the other, it doesn't matter. You, you you can do it. It's it's not limited to one ship. It's actually a double. Here, check this out. Can you see that right there? Let me see if I can get, look at that. Look at that. You got the two cruise ships and then you get the high wire in between the, the two ships and you can walk across from one ship to another on p and Isn't that beautiful? Wouldn't you love to try that at sea while you're moving along the ocean there and uh, going from one ship to the other? You know, you can check out the buffet on the other ship to see if it's any good uh, or, you know, say hi to the captain and double back, you know. Well, that that's a great new feature for a cruise i think uh they announced that yesterday on april the first isn't that great that's a beautiful thing and then uh i caught something else uh it was virgin uh virgin uh, voyages the the new cruise line that richard branson is um, putting together they came up with an, a new uh, feature they're launching that just differentiates themselves from all the other cruise lines this is great i tell you this this is going to be a trendsetter. I bet you everyone's going to get in on it. But these guys, they nailed it. They're the first off the block with this one. Instead of calling it, uh, instead of offering uh, just just Wi-Fi, they got a new, another version of this. It's called Wi-Fi. It's W-A-F-I. Wi-Fi. And uh, using this incredible new technology, this is this is the news release. I'm reading this right now. A Virgin Voyages uh, will offer underwater diving experiences unmatched by anything seen in the travel industry to date. Uh, each ship will then serve as a beacon for the areas in the ocean within the vicinity of the vessel with access to the network, Virgin said. By granting sailors underwater Wi-Fi access, we're allowing people to stay connected even when they decide to explore the great abyss below. Imagine exploring the underwater world coming across a fish you want to learn more about and being able to do that research right on your phone or diving with a group of friends and snapping the most epic underwater selfie ever, then posting it in real time. Stepping into the untapped industry of ocean-based Wi-Fi seemed the next natural step to us, said Andy Schwab, chief technology officer at Virgin Voyages. We wanted to be able to Bring the internet culture to our sailors, even in places where it has yet been unattainable, like under the water. Is that great or what? That also was released yesterday. They talked about that yesterday as a feature coming up on, on Virgin Voyager. Man, you got to love it. Wi-Fi. You can take an underwater selfie and post it in real time. I, I could do my show in the water. Uh, it was surrounded by the coral reefs and just get one of those masks where I have a microphone in there and I can just talk to you guys right from the, this is, man, this is fantastic. I got to tell you this, man, there's things are happening fast. Now here's another one. Uh, this came out yesterday. Yeah. I, I, I tell you, I, I got to buy into this. If, if this, this I think could be a new trend in cruising. Um, basically uh, it's, it's a company called cruise and maritime voyages. Uh, they're rolling out what they call the silent deck. The silent deck. This is fantastic. Um, Voyage has rolled out its new silent deck for guests wanting peace and quiet. You got to love this idea. Look at this. Uh, outboard crew uh, plus guests alike will not be permitted to speak, the company says. This is great stuff. Um, passengers will be communicated, communi communicated to 
by text messages or through hand-delivered notices. On the silent deck, there will be no music or announcements, and silence will reign supreme in the area. Passengers not booked into the silent deck area will be able to pay a special supplement known as hush money. Yeah, uh, for short for a short allocated period of tranquility whilst on board. How about that? I mean, there's they got signage for it. Silent deck. Look at that. That is that's awesome, man. That's oh, that that's another key announcement that was made yesterday uh, from this cruise line. Fantastic. I'm telling you, I'm uh, I'm I'm amazed at some of the stories out there. Uh, I mean, there are stories out there uh, that are hitting the uh, the uh, the internet, and boy, a bunch of them came out yesterday. There's a whole bunch of April first stories came out. It was amazing. I, I was. I should have gone on the air. There was so much news going on. I should have gone on the air. Um, wow, that's awesome stuff. A first, a first super chat from C. Randy says, Debbie Manuel, yeah, Randy, even while on vacay, awesome. Jim Thomas, so jealous. Lucky Lucas, hopefully you're having a great time. Jealous of your trip coming up. Uh, Wendy Thompson, may the Costa captain uh, sail some snow your way. Sunday was funny. <laughs> AJ Walsh, 83 degrees in Las Vegas today, Bruce. Uh, from AJ, who was one of your April, it was one of your April fools yesterday. You, you, what happened? I don't understand it. Richard Kornmaski, hi Bruce, thirty-four here uh, in Philly. We had a stupid snow in Philly again. Yeah, me too. I got it. Uh, Heather Young, did you hear about the family getting kicked off the Disney cruise? I did. I did hear about that story. Debbie Manuel, uh, me too. AJ, he sure did hook this fish with that whopper. Whopper? What are you? What are you talking about? What am I? Talking about uh, talking about Burger King stories. What's going on, Jim Thomas? Deb, ask a question about booking your activities. Sea keeper, that family uh, seems to never have set foot on the ship itself. They messed up in the terminal. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a sec. Norman Duarte, yep, snow is here, but fifty in Bridgeport, Connecticut. That means it's melting. Debbie Manuel, uh, uh, Seelid, yeah, was that family that could not board due to pregnancy? Yes, it was. Uh, Norman lost sound over here, over there. Uh, Sherman Mercer back again, 80 degrees in South Texas. Oh, nice. Uh, Debbie Manuel, like a man in an RV. <laughs> like a man in an RV. What are you talking about? Uh, Richard Kermaski, good luck with your land cruiser. <laughs> Sea Keeper, silent, uh, silent uh, deck is bad. If the ship sinks, they won't hear the dreaded six short blasts and one long one. It would be like cruising in a cloistered monastery. What will they think of next? <laughs> That's right. The hush money. You got to pay hush money. You got to pay hush money. Have access to the secret deck, the silent deck. I love that. Got to buy your way in with hush money. I, li I like that. Then you got to wear your hush puppies because you can't walk around with those loud, noisy shoes. You got to be, you know, you got to respect others. Got to wear your hush puppies on deck there. Oh, my goodness. I did hear about this family on a Disney cruise the other day. I, at first, I thought this was one of those April 1st stories, but uh, apparently, it uh, seems that. Uh, a family was going on a Disney cruise, and they were checking in at the terminal. And I guess the story goes that uh, the uh, one uh, one female passenger was kind of showing, uh, you know, showing, expecting. And uh, somebody asked, oh, how far along are you? And uh, the individual uh, said the wrong word. Uh, they mentioned something about uh, six or seven months or something like six and a half months, more than 25 weeks. 25 or weeks or longer. And that's a no-no on a cruise ship. If you're expecting and you're beyond 25 weeks, you're not allowed on the ship. Uh, the ship does not want to deal with the possibility of an early arrival at sea. Uh, they're not there to perform that kind of thing. And I guess this family was denied boarding. And they put up a fuss, I suppose, and uh, they had to call security, and I don't know what happened. So they were not allowed on board. Um uh, that's the gist of the story that I got, and uh, and I thought, yeah, I, I know I've I've heard of that, I've I've seen that somewhere, but I've never uh, never thought to bring it up. But yeah, someone had that story the other day. I think it was our buddy from Edmonton, uh, uh, Dan uh, uh, Dan's um, is a Dan's Dan at Sea or Dan's Travels, Dan's Travels at Sea, something like that. Yeah, he's he's up. I've I've talked to him a couple times through text, and yeah, that's that's the story. Uh, interesting. Uh, what's next? Paying for fresher air? <laughs> ah, yeah, that's a good one. Norman Dwight, okay, sound back. 
okay, sound back this Sunday breakaway. Okay, sound back this Sunday breakaway. Hi, Nina Frank. Hi, Bruce. And y'all from sunny but still cold Sweden. Uh, I was supposed to be at the Regal Princess now, but I left yet. I'm so, but I left yesterday. Uh, to I supposed to be at the Regal Princess now, but I left yesterday. I'm not sure what that actually means. I'm, you kind of got me on the twist of words there, so I'm not quite sure what uh, what's what. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, like I say, folks, if you're new, uh, you've never been here before, uh, we talk cruise ships. We talk cruise ship stories. We talk about uh, travels coming up. Um, we compare notes about different cruise ships. We compare notes about cruise lines. And if any of you have questions about going on a cruise, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, we uh, will, uh, if you're new, you've never been here before, we'll sign in. Tell us where you're watching from. The gang will probably say hi to you because <laughs> I love doing that. Iskew Park, I watched that uh, family's video. We missed everything that she could to make. We missed everything that she could to make Disney the bad guys. No mention of getting full refunds or the husband's loudness at the desk. Yeah, there you go, Scott Batchy. Hi, Bruce, and all dreary day in Ventura today. Sixty and overcast. We had a blizzard here this morning, uh, Scott. I was in a blizzard situation. Now it's brilliant sunshine. Just crazy weather. It's just insane. Nina, uh, uh, it left yesterday without me. Oh, it left yesterday without you. Oh no, uh, George McCower, eighty-one Fahrenheit, sun. Rain, clouds, the villages, Florida, not expecting. So I'm safe to board. Eh? Well, you know, George, uh, you know, uh, you're 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 good to go. Uh, your partner, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, all's good. <laughs> got got to watch the timing, I guess. Uh, Iskew Park, uh, uh, only a fast flash during her video saying she was over 24 weeks pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, something, something. They 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 screwed up. I mean, look, if you're over so many weeks and you lie about it, and they don't uh, call you on it, great, okay. But if you're uh, you're showing and it looks like you're beyond that, you're really showing. They're gonna go, whoa, wait a minute, just just a second here, and I don't know what'll happen after that. I have no idea. It's not my forte, uh, but yeah. A uh, Pamela Jordan, hi Bruce and everyone. Sunny, eighty degrees here in Iva. Fantastic, eighty in Iva. You love that. Uh, Cam Wilson. Hey, Bruce. Hey, everybody. Hey, Cam. How you doing? Wendy Thompson. The yard is muddy. 34. Rain off and on all day. Oh, yuck. That's, that's yuck. We, we, that's a, if it wasn't sunny, it'd be yucky here, but I wouldn't be stepping foot on my front yard right now. Not a chance. It's underneath that snow. Mm, uh, that's muck fest. No, thank you. So, uh, this spring, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta dry up. Uh, what was I gonna tell you? Oh, I have another, little, another little thing to tell you about. Uh, yesterday, actually. Um, uh, during the, uh, during the day yesterday, um, in the afternoon, my, my wife had some friends over, uh, that, uh, husband and wife came over and they brought their 10 year old little son with them. And, um, uh, he, he found out that, uh, I used, I have these right here. You, you guys, all, almost everybody, you know what these are, my medallions and my sport necklaces, $10 donation on super chat. You can have one of these. Okay. Uh, well, he saw these. And he, he was just enthralled by these. And so he was asking me about these necklaces and medallions. And so I told him the story about how I have a YouTube channel. I'm a YouTuber. Well, he found out I'm a YouTuber. I'm a creator. Wow. You, you want to talk to me some more. So it's, you know, it was kind of cool having a 10-year-old guy wanting to talk to a you know 62-year-old because I'm kind of like doing stuff that he's going, wow, you're on, you're on YouTube. I watch YouTube all the time. You know, <laughs> Of course, he doesn't watch my channel. Why would he? So he's asking, well, what, what kind of what kind of videos do you do? Like, you know, what kind of channel have you got? So I'm explaining what I do. So I so I said, well, let me show you let me show you uh, uh, some of my work. And so uh, I showed him the the clip of the video where I was doing the Q and A uh, between passengers and the staff. You know, what side of the ship do the whales come up, come up on? You know, because you know, I got my camera ready. Want to take a photo? I don't want to miss the whales. What what side of the ship should I be on for the whales? Right. Uh, and then, you know, do you have cable or satellite uh, for the televisions and, you know, that sort of stuff. So I showed him that clip, you know, and he, he thought that was hilarious. He, he was shaking his head going, those people are so stupid. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. And then, and then I thought, you know, what do you, what, what, what can I show him, um, that'll interest, you know, catch his interest uh, because, you know, 10 year olds can be, they can, their attention span could be like this long and then, you know, they're off. Right. And, uh, Anyway, my wife and, and, and the husband and wife, they're off over here at the dining table just having a cup of tea and having a lovely chat. And this young guy and I were sitting in front of the computer here, and, and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show him 
I'm going to show him a video that I just saw the other day from Jim Zim. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't have to show my stuff because <laughs> it's just me sitting here talking to you. So I, I showed him a Jim Zim video of the uh, Symphony of the Seas because Jim just loaded one up a couple days ago. And I said to him, you know, have you ever been on a cruise before? He says, no, no, I remember. He said, how big can those ships be? So I was trying to try to explain to a 10-year-old, how big can the cruise ship be? You know, we're, we're in landlocked British Columbia here. <laughs> He's never been to the United States. He has never been to the USA. So, uh, uh, so I, I was trying to explain to him, looking down the roadway here, I said, well, you see this road going down there? And I was trying to explain to him, the, the, down a block, that's how long the ship is. You know, it's wider than the street that we're sitting on. And of course, that still doesn't kind of get him. So I put the Jim Zim video on. And I said, okay, well, let me, let me show you a video about the building and the completion of this ship. So we sat and watched Jim's uh, video. And, uh, and his eyes were just like that. And they had, uh, he had great video of uh, the press, uh, people from the press on board the, the ship, you know, checking it out. And there were families on board. And there were kids in the water park and on the slide. So he's just, he's just amazed. I said, well, what do you think of these water slides? He says, well, I'm the king of water slides. I'm going, you are? Well, you're going to love this ship. And so I'm showing him the video of the kids going down the water slide. Oh, he was just blown away so yeah royal caribbean's got a winner there uh the oasis class as we know is a winner uh and if you've got a family with children uh i mean here's this little guy uh, he's just stunned he's stunned and then he sees central park on the ship with plants they have trees on a cruise ship are you kidding me i said yeah check it out look at the guys walking through the central parker then he sees the waterfalls he sees the carousel <laughs> i mean i'm just I overloaded this poor guy. <laughs> Got to the buffet. Now, this is the fun part. I said, well, you know, what do you like to eat for breakfast? And, and you know, when, when you when, you ever go to a restaurant with your mom and dad? Oh, yeah. Oh, what's the favorite food you like to have? Because I asked him if he'd ever been to a buffet. He'd never been to a buffet before. He's just a 10-year-old guy. So I, I thought, well, I, I got to explain what a buffet is. So I'm <laughs> showing him. I'm clicking in on YouTube for buffets on a cruise ship. There's all kinds of videos about buffets on a cruise ship. Oh, so we're, we're, finding, we're finding a video where someone had a camera, like a telephone, you know, a smartphone, and they're walking along the buffet, and they're showing the selections. And I said, oh, I'd like that for breakfast. Oh, they got the bears, the bacon. Look at all the bacon in that bowl. He said, oh, I love bacon. I said, well, I'm, I bet you they got more bacon than you can eat. So, oh, I don't know about that. I said, oh, I think they do. And then they come along to the sausages and then the scrambled eggs. And then the thing, oh, he just had a field day. So we spent about an hour with this little guy watching YouTube videos. And it was through his eyes I got to see the wonderment of cruise ships to someone of that age who have no concept of uh cruise ships at sea uh you talk to him about it he kind of goes oh oh yeah yeah have no idea what we're talking about that's not a cloak so showing him youtube videos i know right now he's probably uh today today after school or tonight when he's home he's gonna be on his computer and he's gonna probably enter some more symphony symphony of the seas he's no he knows the name of symphony of the seas he'll be checking out symphony of the seas videos <laughs> I don't know if he'll check out my videos, but we got a fan here, and he was just stunned, absolutely, completely blown away that this actually exists, and it's so uh, friendly to children. I mean, he just he couldn't believe that cruise ships would be so unbelievable. I then showed him a video of a Disney cruise. I uh, showed him a Disney fascination or something like that. I can't remember the name of the ship. Might not be that. Anyway, we sh I showed him a Disney show. He was bored. Bored. Because the whole video had to do with all the characters and the in the inside activity rooms that the Disney cruise ship has. And he's looking at the video and he's seeing all these four, six, and seven year old kids. And he's just he's just going, I can see his head, just his brain's going, that's for children. He's 10. <laughs> I'm older than that. Show me the water slides. Show me the rock climbing wall. Show me that wave running flow machine, that surf. I want to see that. So that's what I show me the basketball court where they can shoot basket. This is unbelievable on a ship. You can do that. Well, that was that was pretty cool. So I was kind of neat to uh, kind of watch this reaction of this little guy. Uh, we take it for granted, those of us who've cruised before. Uh, when you're all grown up, you're you've got a different perspective on life. And you gotta re you gotta really wow me, man. You gotta super wow me to get my attention. This little guy, 
oh man, he's just whew, over the top. And it brought me back to when I was six years old, coming back from uh, Germany with my parents, my sister uh, crossing the Atlantic on the um, the uh, the Homerick, the ship called the Homerick, and uh, seven hundred odd foot ocean liner, eighteen thousand tons. <laughs> Big ocean liner, eighteen thousand tons. <laughs> the uh, the uh, Symphony of the Seas, two hundred and twenty thousand gross tons. Oh my gosh! I remember as a six year old how big the ship was that we were on, and it just went on forever. You could walk and walk, and I I would wear out. I'd be exhausted. Couldn't walk the whole ship as a six year old. Yeah, because you know the my dad was a pretty sharp cookie. Let's walk the kid on the upper deck. And then we'll walk them on the main deck. Then we'll go down on the promenade deck. Then we'll walk along the hallways. He'll be he'll be sleeping in no time. <laughs> sure enough, I I slept well on that ocean liner, but boy, I ate well too. Some of the memories, unbelievable. That was kind of cool doing that with a young guy. And I, I kind of wonder if any of you are ever thinking, are any of you out there thinking of a of a skip gen cruise? Are any of you thinking as grandma and grandpa out there that? Uh, today or a year from now or down the road, would you consider taking a cruise with grandchildren and leaving mom and dad back home to take care of whatever they got to take care of, either making more babies or just working or going on their own holiday, but grabbing the grandkids and taking them on a ship like the Symphony of the Seas for a week, uh, grandma and grandpa and the kids, man, that would be something. The skip gen cruising is a big deal. It's coming on fast. And I'm curious if any of you have ever thought of doing that. Uh, let's see here. Who's else is saying, if I missed anyone's messages or have you all just been listening to me spiel away here, uh, Richard Kermeski, I feel sorry for his parents. Now he'll be bugging them to go on a cruise. Oh, he was, he was saying, Oh, mom and dad, we got to go on a cruise. <laughs> and I can, I can, I can hear, Oh, I'd be nice. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, Jim Zim had on that video, uh, he was highlighting the two story family room, the, the one that's $35,000 a week. And, uh, he's, Mom, Dad, we can have a room for only $35,000. <laughs> I had no concept of money. <laughs> yeah, Richard, you got it. <laughs> he's mugging. I actually took him to vacations to go.com. I'm not kidding. I took him to vacations to go.com and I showed him the fruit, the prices of the cruises. I said, Well, look at this. You can get a balcony cruise here for you know, $900 a week, $800 a week, whatever the prices were. <laughs> so he said, Mom, we can get out for only $800 each. <laughs> Parents are not going to be left alone for a long time. This little guy's he's infected. <laughs> Cam Wilson, that's how I was when I was young in my first cruise. I was in awe the whole time. I mean, it's just it's just unfathomable for someone that young just to think about that. To see the thing in real life. Oh my gosh, a cruise ship, these are amazing. We as adults are blown away. Kids are mega blown away, I'm sure. Uh, a sea keeper. I'm checking Symphony of the Seas for next winter too. I owe myself a cruise. I work hard and I deserve it. Yes, you do. SQ Park Disney is is uh, the way to go with grandkids. It, it certainly would be. Uh, Randy Lucas. Lots of three generation families on this week's cruise. There you go. Lots of three gens on there. They're on there. Multi generational cruising. It's the uh, yeah. The baby boomers are grandma and grandpa, and they think they're 20 years younger than they actually are. You darn right, they're on that tail. Uh, Norman Duarte. Oh, you should video him. Uh, you should video see his face and post it here. Uh, and Richard, uh, vacations go have a have a have to sponsor you. Vacations go has to sponsor me. Yeah, there you go. Sure, they should. There you have it. Yeah, it was uh, it was a neat little thing to watch. Uh, he he was just enthralled, uh, just absolutely blown away that on YouTube, a channel he loves. Uh, he's he loves watching kitten videos and doggy videos where they. They fall asleep and fall off the end of the couch and all this gag stuff. He loves watching this stuff, but I'm showing him this stuff and he's just going, whoa. And he's watching kids, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old doing this stuff. And he's going, whoa, that's real. Oh man, Mom, we got to go on a cruise. <laughs> Uh, George McCrower, Wikipedia, RMS Homerick originally launched as Columbus built for um, Nort. North Deutscher uh, Lloyd brought, launched in 1913, ceded to Great Britain in 1919 as part of the German war reparations, sold to Warp's White Star Line in 1920. Uh, George, uh, that is correct on that ship, but that is not the Homerick I was on. The Homerick I was on was with Home Lines from Italy. Uh, the ship had about a 20 year life uh, lifespan. I think it was launched around 54 or 50, 
five ish and uh, burned up in the Mediterranean, had a fire, and it ultimately was so bad, the fire, they had to scuttle it, 73, 1973 in the Caribbean. I think Trinidad, Tobago, if I recall, is where it caught fire. I'm not 100% sure. But that's one of the ships called the Homerick, uh, and this is the uh, the another, and it was uh, run by Home Lines. Home Lines eventually was bought by Holland America. They took whatever Home, home Lines had left. Uh, but home lines never became a massive uh, entity, but they did run a couple of transit. They ran ships transatlantic uh, for a while, but George, you're right on that first one. You're absolutely right on that first one. Um, Randy Lucas, uh, by the way, strongly suggest booking a bungalow on princess K's super quiet from the crowds. How about that? Uh, man, the features they have on these islands, eh? it's incredible. Uh, the, uh, these cruise lines are vertically integrating themselves, you know, more and more and more and here's a classic example of what you can do on this private getaway betcha Mar marlenia uh disney cruise did re refund the family of 10 all their money and i heard that she started raising their voices because they were trying to get them on that 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 uh, started raising the voices because they're trying to get them on interesting uh, very interesting <clears throat> that's uh, uh you know disney has rules and if they refunded the dough they refunded the dough i'm sure the family's holiday is you know, shot to hell as far as timing goes and everything else but breaking the rules uh yeah that's the way it is uh okay now news uh i have one piece of news today uh i came across and um uh, it it's um it's not that old it's a couple of days old so it's probably quite recent but uh, i it, it it it's a bit of a story behind this so let me kind of go into this it's about norwegian cruise lines the story about uh, uh norwegian cruise lines is uh uh, George saying cruise uh, ship names duplicated for different lines. Uh, ever sailed on vessels named the Nina, Pinta, Santa Maria. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Randy Lucas, our bungalow had uh, air conditioning, private beach, and dedicated service staff. Yeah, it would. Uh, that's pretty nice. Wendy Thompson, you will have to, you will have the kid bugging mom and dad to go great, a great, great place for a kid with a bottomless pit. <laughs> Yeah, he'll he'll be he was probably dreaming about cruising last night. I have a feeling he was even having dreams about going on a cruise. I don't know if they're going to see Uncle Bruce anytime soon. <laughs> he might not come back here. <laughs> this guy Bruce, he's too much. All right, this is a story about Norwegian Cruise Lines. All right, Norwegian Cruise Lines uh, announced that the um, the uh, Norwegian Sun uh, is going into dry dock in Victoria, British Columbia, uh, for a two and a half week time frame um it'll be ready uh, later this month it'll be completed um the uh, the uh, first ship uh oh okay okay hang on let me, let me don't get ahead of myself it's going going for two and a half weeks of dry dock okay so that's probably 40 50 million dollars worth of work being done on the ship uh the ship was built in uh, 1990 91 or so uh holds 2000 passengers uh a sister ship called the sky uh, is has already been put in the dry dock. It's come out, and uh, the sky is now coming out of Miami. It's now sailing out of Miami, and it's doing three and four day cruises every week. It's doing a three day cruise to um, the Cays, the private island, of the uh, Stirrup Cay, and then to uh, to Nassau and back to Miami. And the four day cruise takes it from Miami to I believe uh, the Keys, Florida Keys, and then to Havana for a couple of days. It's like an overnight stay in Havana and then uh, to the uh, Stirrup K on the way back to Miami and then back to Miami. So that's the four day version. Now, the Sky, the NCL Sky was refurbished and they call it now an all-inclusive cruise. And they're saying they're doing the same thing with the Norwegian Sun. They're gonna refurbish it and start offering these three and four day cruises out of Port Canaveral as all-inclusive cruises. I looked into this and I realized, no, 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 that, that's not true. Those aren't all-inclusive cruises, no. What they're doing is they're offering three and four day cruises with a, I'm gonna call it a basic drink package as the deal. It's not an all-inclusive cruise. They still have the specialty restaurants. You gotta pay extra for those. They're not all-inclusive at all. Uh, the Tappan Tappananaka one and the, uh, the the steakhouse and you know they're all extra. They're still extra. Only the drink package and you get 
you get apparently uh, you get some sodas and you get basic alcoholic drinks. So it's not like the high end drink package. No, it's just, you know, rum and Coke or a beer, you know, whatever. Okay. So I, uh, I decided to go online to uh, vacations to go.com just for fun. How much is a cruise on these uh, cruise ships right now? So I looked up the uh, sky, which, which is running now. And I'm looking at the future cruises for the sun, the NCL sun. And lo and behold, 200 bucks a night. <laughs> $200 a night uh, plus tips. And guess what? The tips are $20 a person per night for the tips. Yeah. So 60 or 80 bucks per person for the tips. $200 a night for your fare. And I'm talking the cheaper fares. I'm looking at vacations to go from the low to the high, you know, low to the high. And I'm finding, uh, I'm finding $800, $850 cruises for four nights, uh, Miami to, you know, the Keys, Havana, Stirrup, K and back. I'm thinking, yeah, plus the taxes, plus the tipping. And then if you want a premium drink, oh, no, that's extra. You want a premium restaurant, well, that's extra. And I'm thinking, what a brilliant idea from NCL in one way. And what a stupid idea for a tourist on the other way. Because I'm thinking to myself, I would never do that deal. You're not going to catch me doing that. Are you kidding me? Why would I want to pay $200 a night? This is balcony rooms, by the way. I'm not talking insides. Why would I want to pay $200 a night balcony plus tipping plus taxes and fees uh, for a three-night cruise to, say, the Bahamas uh, when for $800 for a week I can get a balcony on the Holland America Eurodam uh, with a seven-day cruise? Why would I do a three-day when I can do a seven day, why would I why would I pay eight hundred more or eight hundred nine hundred a thousand dollars for some of these cruises to Cuba? Am I that desperate to go to Cuba? If I am, okay, I get it. But what have you got in amenities on this cruise ship to compete with the uh, the bliss that's going to be out of Europe, out of uh, Miami, or uh, Harmony of the Seas right now that's out of Miami, or uh, the Epic, or uh, the getaway, I mean, you know, look, look who's who's sailing now. Beautiful ships, beautiful itineraries, seven day deals. Why would you pay uh, as much for that when you can get it for so much less? And the ships themselves, I mean, the the sky and the sun, they'll renovate them, but they're not going to put on amenities on those ships that will rival a uh, these brand new latest generation cruise ships. I mean, they they they're, they're not putting in a hundred million into the ship to bring it to that level. But for Norwegian, brilliant move. You're taking your oldest ships, your, your, you know, the high milers. They've been around since 1990-something, 2000. They've been at sea a long time. They've had gazillions of passengers in these rooms. And you're keeping those ships alive by putting together these three- and four-day cruises. And, of course, uh, offering out of Port Canaveral, a three-day Caribbean cruise. Does that sound familiar? There's a cruise line now out of Port Canaveral doing three-day cruises to uh, Bahamas, and they're trying to sell you a timeshare, and they're trying to sell you uh, a, a land stay, and it's on an old uh, Carnival cruise ship from the 90s, no balconies. Sound familiar, folks, in Florida? Yeah, my Floridians know what I'm talking about. This cruise is 139, 159, uh, 169 for a three-day getaway. Well, here's here's Norwegian saying, well, I'll tell you what, well, why don't you take a three-day getaway with a balcony and a drink package on a Norwegian cruise line? Here you go. And so you've got a nicer ship than a an old, an older carnival without any balconies at all. Here you got a cruise ship with a balcony all refurbished. Quick three-day getaway, but the dollars, you're talking six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a three-day getaway. That's the price of a one-week cruise through a whole bunch of other cruise lines. Uh, you're not getting me on that deal. <laughs> so anyway, I thought I'd mention that today. Very interesting reading. I, I read the article again, and then I went to vacations to go, and I looked at the prices, and I went, really? You're trying to get passengers to pay that kind of money for that age of a ship? 
and it's three and four days only. Uh, what are you? What are you giving me? What's what's the deal? What's the perk? Is there a spa package? No. Is there a a free a free uh, deal a meal at a specialty restaurant? Nope. Is there a, a two hundred dollar onboard credit? Nope. Is there a, you know what? You get, what are you giving me? Ah, we're giving you a drink package. You can get drunk on board this thing. And I'm thinking, oh no. <laughs> Uh, not for me. Three-day Bahamas cruise drink package. Oh, that's called a booze cruise. Uh, I don't think I'm into that. Uh, I can understand an all-inclusive uh, cruise package for $225 a night on the Viking line. Uh, and every room is a balcony, and it includes the specialty restaurants. It includes the spa. There is no casino. The average age is 65. I, I, I get that. But on this ship... Now, they're not competing against Carnival because Carnival is undercutting them by a ton of money. I mean, you can get on a Carnival cruise ship three nights, four nights to Cozumel and Cancun, and uh, you get a super deal for four or $500, 350 You know, these prices we see all the time, super cheap. Uh, buy your booze a la carte or buy a, buy a drink package if you want. But this one here, yeah, this is expensive stuff. That's per person. So if the one person doesn't drink alcohol, tough beans you're paying top dollar whether you're drinking booze or not and so uh, gotta really think about that so i thought that was quite interesting uh reading today i'll see if anyone has any uh comments on this uh wendy uh uh no not wendy richard kormaski we paid about 170 a night for a large balcony in the prime location on our prince on our princess from rome for 24 days and had the free drink package to boot thank you very much yeah and Sea Keeper, we sailed three times on the Norwegian Sun and loved it. That was a long time ago, but I wouldn't fork out that kind of cash for that aged clunker nowadays. Exactly, you're, you're saying it. You're saying exactly what I was thinking, right there, Sea uh, Sea Keeper. You're right on it. Silo, uh, hey, funny guy, uh, back from Ivers Fish, eating and catching up. Call you. <laughs> Hi, Silo. How you doing? Did you have a good time with my video yesterday? Did you like that story? Uh, it was great. Uh, anyway, yeah, the tips. I couldn't believe the tip. Uh, instead of fourteen fifty a night, twenty bucks a night per person tip money. Are you kidding? No way. No, no, no way. What is that? To pick up the vomit? Is that the deal? I'm drinking so much and I'm puking everywhere. Is that what's going on? I mean, geez, you got to be kidding me. Uh, ridiculous. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I just, I read that story and I had to relay that to you guys and uh, put in some color commentary in there because I thought, my goodness. This is uh, this is crazy. Uh, here we go. Sherman Mercer seven day Caribbean balcony cruise, five hundred forty nine dollars on the MSC Seaside, May the twenty sixth on VacationsGo.com. Now look, you, you could take a higher balcony and get away from that poop smell, and maybe do it that way. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Why would you five forty nine on the Seaside? As bad as it's been, might be a better deal than eight hundred fifty dollars for a four nighter. On a 20 plus old, 25 old year old cruise ship to a Cuban back. I don't know. I just, I just, I don't, I don't see it. Now, look, if I'm a descendant, uh, I'm a Cuban, former Cuban national, I'm now an American citizen, and I can visit my homeland for an overnight stay in Havana Harbor, and I can catch up with people I haven't seen for 20, 30, 40 years. Priceless. Pr priceless. I get it. I get it. And maybe they have enough. Maybe Norwegian just happens to have enough passengers to aim at for these two ships. Maybe that's maybe that's the strategy. 2,000 people every week to Havana on each one. Maybe that maybe that's what they've got. I, have that. I don't fault Norwegian if they can get the money. <laughs> you, can, you can ask for the money and you get the money? Way to go. Good business people. I say smart, good on you. But as a consumer, I'm thinking, hmm, Unless I really want to go to Havana, I, I don't. I don't think so because um, I've got choices, especially on the three-day cruise where there is no Havana in the equation. It's just uh, stir, syrup K Nassau. Well, why don't I take a seven-day cruise uh, with with uh, Hall America Celebrity uh, Carnival? You know, going to one of the Vista class ships. Wow, what a deal! Uh, Royal Caribbean uh, Princess. And and have a wonderful time uh, for less, way less. So uh, you know, again, it's up to, to each his own, I guess. Uh, Silo, uh, for your information, Haven 
on the Bliss was cheaper than Haven on the Jade. Go figure. Isn't it? You just got to learn how to shop around. You got to shop around and check the prices. An educated traveler is a traveler paying fair price. An uneducated, spur of the moment traveler, sucker born every day. <laughs> You're paying through the nose for no reason. Exactly. Well done. Well done. Judy Anstis, hey Bruce, 82 degrees in Fresno. 82 degrees. You gotta love that. That's fantastic, Judy. A seakeeper, seaside circumstances are sad, but we all know they have way more to fix than just the uh, melodious lower decks. <laughs> Melodious. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, Wes Morrison, uh, Disney leaves from Port Canaveral. Do you think Nor uh, Norwegian is competing with them? I don't think so, really. Um, totally different clientele. Well, totally. Much different clientele. Um, Disney uh, makes no bones about it. Uh, they're not cheap. They're, you know, there's no surprise there. We all know Disneyland, Disney World uh, is not cheap. It's, it's not a discount holiday place. Um, as a smart consumer, you can go to Disneyland, Disney World, and the surrounding area and spend less money than a lot of other people do spend by going to these places. But on the cruise side, <clears throat> Disney cruises have never been $199 for a week. You know, they just don't advertise themselves like that. They advertise the experience of Disneyland. That's that's the deal. It's the adventure, the magic, the 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 the, uh, the history, the pedigree. And so NCL. Um, whatever, whatever kind of money they're charging for the, those two ships that they, they can get it, they can get it. On the other hand, I would rather pay, uh, uh, more to be on a brand new ship that's been broken in a bit, um, uh, than uh, paying top dollar for, for an antique older vessel. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, Norwegian would never have thought to uh, resurrect the sky and the sun. They would have sold them off. They would just sold them off. To a, to a, send them to the Asia market. Send them to Australia. Send them to the Middle East. Uh, have them become a regional ferry type operation. Maybe from uh, you know from uh, you know uh, Abu Dhabi to uh, you know Cairo or something like that. I mean, just send them out of there. Get them out. Not suitable for the North American market. But by refreshing them and throwing in a drink package, uh, passengers will be so looped on board they won't notice or won't care that what they're on, they don't care. Because it's the destination, probably Havana, and it's the free booze, or the, the so-called per perception of free booze. Well, you're paying 200 plus dollars a night. By the time it's all said and done, you're paying 250 a night, each $500 a night for the room, and the two you can drink all you want, the cheap stuff. Cruise Line will make money. No matter how much you drink, they'll make money. So there you go. That's the deal. Uh, let's see here. I, SQ Park, I've been to Cuba three times over 28 years. Latest was uh, two years ago, two stays at the Var Varadero, one on the Jamaica side of Cuba, Del Maria del Portillo, 28 years ago. And Canadians in general have been to Cuba, a number of Canadians have been there a number of times on these all inclusive one week vacations where you stay at the resort and it's all in and it's, uh, you know, it's okay. Uh, but is it high end? No, but it's, it's okay. Um, middle-class vacations, uh, in Cuba afforded to the middle-class because the airfare is all included. It's a one package deal, maybe, you know, thousand bucks each, 800 bucks each for the week. And off you go, all you can eat, all you can drink. Uh, but the complaints that I hear about the comments I get over the years and years and years, the, the mood, the food's the same every night. The buffet has got the same 20 choices, selections. And uh, it is so much, it's repetitive, repetitive. And you're stuck at the resort. There's nowhere to go because uh, the island just isn't developed much outside the resort areas because the government wants to keep you there. You're, they're not interested in you roaming around <laughs> Cuba. <laughs> so stay in the resort and just hang out. Now, look, you're dog tired. You've worked your butt off for a year. You got your holiday time. You're getting away from that darn old boss and you only got so many dollars. And you got, you know, a certain window of time. So you grab an all-inclusive and you get down there and you say to yourself, I'm getting five and a half days of do nothing. And that's what I need. 
and it's a you know a one day ordeal to get here, and it's a one day ordeal to get back, and that's there's the week right there. And people tolerate it; they they take it, they take that punishment to get five and a half days of, and hopefully that one week it doesn't rain. <laughs> so not for this guy; it's not going to work for me. But there are many many Europeans and Canadians who've done this. Again and again and again. So there you go. It all you know, to each his own. Silo, a uh, haven on the bliss. The amenities are tenfold compared to the J two. So you think you think they would get you? you you'd wonder, you know? Yeah, maybe Askew. It's just uh, <clears throat> they just have more suites on the bliss than on the Jade. It's just bigger, you know. It's a bigger haven, right? More levels. And uh, it's a volume thing, and they're they just, they're starting cheap, and as they fill it up, they raise the price until it's sold out, and they'll just get people going that way. I I don't know. It might be that the Haven just isn't as attractive to people sailing to Alaska right now. Maybe that's the problem, or the your the Caribbean side is on sale because there's so much other competition for the money. You know, the Haven has to compete not only against. Um, uh, say the the higher class on 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 Royal Caribbean, or the uh, the uh, Havana the Cabanas on on uh, Vista class ships on Carnival, or uh, the celebrity higher end suites or princesses all in America. You've also got Viking cruise lines. They're just right there. They're just lurking around that two hundred something a night range, two twenty and a little higher. You're now into that territory. If the if the Norwegian Cruise Lines wants to sell Haven Suites, but they're trying to get you to cough up two ten, plus twenty bucks in tipping a night, plus this, plus that, and it doesn't include all kinds of other stuff. And you can go on the Viking Ocean Cruise, and you pay two hundred twenty five a night, and it's all the specialty dining included, drinks included, entertainment included, uh, shore excursions are included on every port. Why would you go on a 4,000 passenger mayhem, complete mayhem cruise when you could be on a 930 passenger luxury liner targeted for upper tastes and a calmer environment? That's where I'd be. I'd, I'd drop everything, do that. Anyway, that's just, that's just me. Uh, Iskew, I believe Cuba is a gem due to the U.S. embargoes, is one of the nicest, most wonderful countries to visit. Uh, the people are wonderful and so nice. Uh, direct flights even from uh, hick towns like Thunder Bay, Ontario. Yeah, um, like I said, Canada has had a relationship with Mexico all along. Uh, we haven't got a beef with, uh, I'm sorry, Cubans. Uh, Canada has no beef with Cubans. Um, and so we've been frequenting the island as tourists, but only as all-inclusive in secluded resorts now they do have tours they have day tours where you get on a bus and we'll take we'll take you to a rum distillery or to a plantation or to a, an old fort uh there's all kinds of tours you could take the guided tours of course and sponsored tours but you know if you want to get away for a one-week vacation and just hang out on a beach or hang out by a pool and it's gosh darn winter back in canada and it's snowing and blizzards and just yuck and you want to get away to hot, hot tropical weather, Cuba is a place to go. I mean, it used to be 500 bucks for a week, 600 bucks for a week per person. Deal. That Canadian dollars, I'm talking. Canadian dollars. Cheap. But uh, but uh, uh, it's not a cruise. It's not a cruise. There's something about a cruise that just is so much more to me. To me. And I think to a lot of you. Um, Nina Frank saying, actually found an itinerary. For a single cabin, for $449, they usually put double fare charge, but this one was zero, zero extra for a single. This on the getaway on the 7th of April, then, then they bragging, they're bragging about their studios. I understand why it's on sale. It's the 7th of, 7th of April. It's, it's, it's right now. It's right now. It's a last minute deal. And you got, if you can't, you take that deal, you enjoy it, but you take it now. Uh, that's why it's available for that price. Iskew Park, three and a half hour uh, direct flight uh, breeze to go through security as well. Very nice in Cuba. There you go. 
Kathy Butler, uh, turning in even though I'm tuning in. She says, I'm tuning in even though I'm still salty about yesterday's prank. What are you talking about? I have no idea what you laughing out loud at a prank. What? Something must have happened yesterday, I tell you. Uh, Randy, how is the cabin and food on your ship? She's asking. <laughs> He's been saying good things. He's been talking good things so far, Kathy. He's having a great old time, like me, having a great old time. I read another article today to kind of finish things up, but I read another article today. It's like a topic of discussion. It's uh, five misunderstandings that people have about going on a cruise. Five, his, and this, this, is, this has been years. This, these arguments have been years we all probably heard him. If we ever, if you've ever talked to a friend of yours who's never gone on a cruise, and you've tried to talk him to going into a cruise. Maybe one of these five, or three of these five, or all five of these five arguments have come back to you over the years. Uh, let's see here. Silos, yes, more sweets, but the Bliss Haven has its own lounge restaurant. The Jade used a couple of restaurants for breakfast and dinner. We will see. We will see if we like the big ship or the J size. Jade size ship. Absolutely, Silo. Randy Lucas, the cabin is very nice. Food is excellent as usual. And we're doing the medallion, so it's pretty cool. Nice. Kathy Butler, is the medallion cool and helpful? She's asking. Uh, five misunderstandings about cruising. Uh, number one, cruising is dangerous. People fall off cruise ships all the time. Well, you know, I will admit when someone falls off a cruise ship, it does make the news because. The other 500 cruises in between someone falling off a cruise. Who? What's the report? It's so boring. You know, a ship with 5,000 people left Miami. They went down to these islands in the Caribbean. They came back. Everybody had a great time. whoop de doo What am I going to do on my news hour if no one falls off that darn ship? I need action, man. I'm Fox News. I need to talk to the people about somebody fell off a ship. Oh, this is great. Somebody fell off a cruise ship. Get the cameras down to the wharf and see if we can put a microphone in front of the grieving family members that are waiting for their loved one. It's all we hear about, isn't it? It's, it cruising is dangerous. I don't think so. <laughs> 30, think next year, 30 million will be on a cruise. 30 million. How many fall off a cruise ship a year? Four, three, five. Not 2 million. That's for darn sure. Uh, you know, uh, laughing out loud, Bruce Kemp saying laughing out loud. Uh, number two, uh, stuck on board. Oh, I'm going to be bored to tears. Nothing to do on a cruise ship. That's why I'm not going on a cruise. I'm on board, and all I see is water all around me. I, I, there's nowhere I can go. There's nothing for me to do. Why would I be on a cruise ship in the middle of an ocean? Ugh, that's, that's just, oh, I, you, can't, you can't pay me to go on a cruise. I'd be bored to tears. <laughs> They just don't get it, do they? I'm kind of thinking, if you've got a relative or a friend who's that kind of a complainer, why are you even talking to him about going on a cruise? What are you, crazy? <laughs> you want to hang around with this one? <laughs> why would you want this person near you for the whole week you're on a cruise? They're just going to be moaning and groaning. Nothing to do on a cruise. I think I think we've answered that already on several of our video chats. <laughs> There's lots to do on a cruise. Uh Cruising is only for newlyweds and people who are about to die. That's it. Nobody else in the middle is going to want anything to do with cruising. There's nothing to do for kids. There's nothing to do for 40-year-olds. Nothing to do for a couple trying to get away for a week. Nothing. It's just for newlyweds and for old people. That's it for cruising. We've heard this argument forever. <laughs> and it's kind of... That's kind of out the door, isn't it? Isn't that way out the door? I have to admit, when I was, uh, gosh, I would have been about 20 or so, maybe well, 25, probably 25 years old, when my parents told me they were going on a Hawaiian cruise from San Francisco to Hawaii and back. This would have been about 1980, 80, 85 in that range. Well, that was, you know, love boat type boats uh, as we remember uh watching the television show with captain steubing you had the love boat so what was what was the deal about that cruise what was the big deal about a cruise from frisco to hawaii and back 
Well, it was the downtime. For my mom and dad, it was the downtime. And they were alone. Three children left at the house out of their hair for two weeks. How good is that? They got to fly into San Francisco a day or two before the cruise. How good was that? Yeah, why not do that for a couple of days? And then you're on the ship for four or five days, and then you're sailing around the islands, and you get on two or three or four days. You land on the beach and hang out there for what's not to love, and then coming back dreading the fact that the kids are waiting for us at the house. <laughs> they loved their vacation in 1985. They didn't. They weren't bored because there weren't any flow riding machines or rock climbing walls. Hadn't been invented yet. How could you be bored? They didn't see a future show. They didn't have a flux capacitor and come forward and then go back and go, are you kidding me? I'm not going on that love boat cruise. They looked at that as a reminder of their youth when they both came to Canada on an ocean liner, third class, with nothing. <laughs> now they're on a luxury cruise liner for 15 days to Hawaii and back. Yeah, that was that was a cruise, boy. I tell you, not for the dead at all. They're very much alive, and they talked about that cruise for years, years and years. Fourth argument: cruising is expensive. Can't afford it. Only for rich people. <laughs> These people shouldn't be on cruise ships. <laughs> we know better. You can find a deal on a cruise, and boy, there's just no way you can get a five-star accommodation deal resort, five-star dining for seven full days, even if you're paying for the specialty restaurants. You're paying extra for this. You're still getting... Or over in, say, uh, well, now Vegas today, Vegas. I mean, you want a quality buffet in Las Vegas at, say, Monte Carlo, the Monte Carlo four star hotel. In the Bellagio is five star. Um, is five and a half, five, you know, yeah. You want to buy a buffet for two at the uh, Monte night. Uh, for dinner, 50 bucks. Drop a few bucks for a tip. Add the taxes. What's that, 12% now in Nevada? So you're talking $65 for a buffet uh, in Vegas. And you can only go in the one time because, you know, you get hungry in two hours, you can't go back. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't go back for just a piece of cake. I mean, I was here two hours ago, and I had the come back. For a piece of apple pie. Can I just come back? No, not at the Monte Carlo. I got my receipt. I paid $24.99. No, I can't. No, you're not coming on a cruise ship. You're hungry two or three hours after you had lunch and left the class, 12 o'clock, three in the afternoon. Yeah, you know, just walk in there, go through the hand sanitizer, go on, you know, sanitize your hands first, pick something up, take it to your room. Yeah, go ahead, take it to your room. Try that. Try that at the Bellagio. Yeah, yeah, good. Go, go to the garage for a buffet, and then two hours later, go in there and say, I just want to get a couple of little nibbles to take to my room. <laughs> Try it. Good. Yeah. It's a baton <laughs> and a gun. <laughs> Cruising expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. And the last argument is I'll get sick on board. I'll get so sick. It'll be the worst thing ever. Well, if you can't. Can't be buy into the program that this year 30 million people are going to be on the darn ships. You think 30 million people are going to get sick on cruise ships? Are they that stupid? Really? And they go back again and again? I don't think so. So, uh, yeah, there's remedies. To, uh, but anyway, these are five misconceptions, misunderstandings uh, about cruising, the common ones we hear about all the time. I just thought I'd mention them today. I see those sometimes. I love. I left. But I have to admit, it took a bit of convincing for my good buddy to get me on a cruise for the first time. And I've never gone back. It's fantastic. I'll never, never want to not want to cruise again. I love it. Absolutely love it.
Let's see what we got here about uh, a couple of messages here, laughing out loud. Gambles and Kathy Butler, I think falling is the wrong word. Seems like jumping or pushed is more likely. <laughs> Those mysterious, how did they get off the ship? Richard Kormaski, I agree about the die the die reasons. Some pretty old some pretty old folks. <laughs> Michelle Lucas, uh, taking a minute to say hi from Princess Cruise Theater in, uh, it's Beatlemania night. Beatlemania night. You know, Michelle Ma Bell, do, 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 do. <laughs> Hey, Jude, it's a hard day. We know, we know. Fantastic. I'd love to see that. That sounds great. Kathy Butler, can't, I can't march all over the hot and overcrowded theme parks anymore. So some relaxation and spa time on a cruise is more my speed. Exactly. Kathy, jealous of Randy and Michelle on the Princess Cruise. Safe travels, y'all. Randy Lucas giving us a big, happy smile. Cam, Cam Wilson, wait, you can take the buffet food on a cruise to your room? What? You can take the food to your room? Don't you know that? Don't, have you done that? Don't you pay attention? People go in there. They grab something to eat, and then they walk out with it. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Randy, uh, Richard Kormaski, did you see the Las Vegas room fee per day is now 20 to 40 bucks a night plus parking now? So $13 per person, a deal. Uh, yeah, the the, the, uh, the the cost per room is just insane at going higher, plus those resort fees that they added in the middle of the winter. I love that one. Our pool is closed. Uh, but why is there a resort fee? Well, that's for the resort fee. Is the pool open? No, the pool's closed. So there's a resort fee? Yeah, there's a resort fee. Is the pool open? No, the pool's closed. Yeah, but we give you a newspaper and we give you free local phone. That's the resort fee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's just it's just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, and then the food. Uh, try to buy try to buy uh, a, uh, a uh, toasted bagel and a latte at a starbucks inside the casinos for two and, and and see if you can do it for less than 20 bucks yeah just a little snack with a little bit of jam on it and with a plastic fork and knife and a paper plate sitting on a little table just over here to the side with people running around and casino noise and everything there's a there's a breakfast of champions yeah paying 400 a night for your room or whatever you're paying and ridiculous it's just it's just not the same anymore it's not the same silo i'm glad i missed you live yesterday he says i'm glad i missed you live i really didn't want to say i didn't really want to say buying an rv with eight thousand miles from an rv king was a mistake <laughs> at least a, at least a demo model with under 500 miles laughing out loud you know kooky canuck you kooky Look, I was making this up on the fly. Okay, I I had, you know, I started the story and I had to just keep going. You know, <laughs> I was on a roll. I was rolling. Okay, I mean, first hi y'all. Warm eighty four here today. One hundred seventy four days and counting. Okay, I'm listening. What? I've never seen anyone do that before. All this time, I didn't know that. Laughing out loud. You never knew you could take food at a buffet. You could go to the buffet, grab some food and. Yeah, I see people going into the buffet and, and eating it there. On on the Norwegian cruise line, Princess Cruise Lines, they have the table set out along the side of the uh, glass. You know, we can look down at the ocean over here. They're frolicking in the pool. They walk into the buffet, go, go grab and eat it. Why don't you just take it to your room? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> cruise, man. It's a cruise. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, I think I'm done for the day today. Uh, I got to thank uh, everyone for coming out. I got a super chat from C today. I bet you said do cruise ship videos. I've never had one of those before. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got me a super chat from the middle of the ocean. How about that? That's pretty awesome stuff. Thank you for that contribution. Uh, thank you for all of your uh, comments today and, uh, and questions. I love it. Tomorrow's Tuesday. And it's two for Tuesday tomorrow, uh, five o'clock and eight o'clock. Uh, I'm wondering, should I do uh, should I do trivia tomorrow? Should we have some? Should I dedicate one of the two shows for trivia, or should I just talk about cruising? Or what do you want me to talk about tomorrow? Any thoughts? Any ideas? Type them in. Tell me what you think. How many thumbs ups have we got today? Have we got any thumbs ups today? Uh, twenty six. We got twenty six thumbs ups. So we'll take that. A little better than uh, normal. Kind of a lousy picture of me there today. Doesn't look all that great. 
But, uh, you know, had a great time today. I hope you had a good time today, too. I uh, love uh, love doing this. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll have to speed on my comments. 1,532 subscribers. Thank you very much, folks. Really love it. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to say my goodbyes. And I'll be around tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, see you tomorrow, everyone. Please, uh, trivia, please. Debbie saying trivia. Please, please, trivia. So I'll see what I can put together for some trivia questions. Uh, try not to make them too hard, you know. Uh, <laughs> no trick questions, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys for coming by today. Had a great time. Uh, Richard, here we come with the comments. Richard, have a great day, Bruce and all. Kathy Butler, good topic. Cruz etiquette. Cam Wilson, see you guys tomorrow. Charles Jordan, we have a long day working at the city elections. We hope we'll have time to drop in. Pamela Jordan, good night. I'll see you next time. Fantastic, you guys. Have a great evening, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today. We'll catch you tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern. We'll catch you after that at 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night as well. See one, see both, see them all. Catch you tomorrow. Take it easy and goodbye for now.